This is a video on text connections, and it is part of a series, Small Teaching, Big Learning, where we feature bite-sized strategies to improve HL teaching and learning. Text connections essentially are a tool for getting students to engage with text at a deeper level. In this presentation, I will talk about four text connections, the text to self, text to world, text to text, and text to language. And in keeping with the spirit of this series, small HL teaching, big learning, I will show you how these connections support the principles and practices of HL teaching and how they align with the principles of learning science. Let's start with the principles and practices of HL teaching. As you will see in this video, text connections support expanding our learners' functional proficiency. They help us design curricula that respond to their motivations, life goals, and experiences. And they are a powerful tool as well for differentiating instruction. In terms of how they support or align with the principles of learning science, we will see that they can help students uh, get a sense of belonging in the, in the class and feel motivated uh, and inspired to learn. They also support retrieving, which is remembering, going back to something that was learned before and remembering it and restating it as a way of learning. In addition, they support this concept of interleaving, which may not be very familiar to language teaching. Interleaving essentially involves spacing and mixing practice of skills and knowledge. Now, this is a little bit the opposite of what traditionally we do in language teaching, where we present a concept, let's say a past, the past tense, and then we practice it really intensely for a period of time. And then in the next unit, we move to a new structure, perhaps the future. And although we might occasionally go back to reviewing the past, we don't do it as much as we should. Interleaving means you, re, you visit it once, and then you keep visiting throughout in a semester or a course, and you keep mixing it up with new material as it comes in. This is very effortful for students, but the research shows that it's very effective in terms of learning. So now let's look at the text to self and the text to world connections. I'm grouping these two because they work really well from the point of view of helping our students feel a sense of belonging and motivating them to learn. And in terms of the principles and practices of HL teaching, you can see that they are going to be a powerful tool for designing curricula that respond to students' motivations and life experiences. Here's an exa example of a text to self connection. Actually, there are three of them here. Essentially, it involves asking students to pick out a passage from the text and reacting in any number of ways, such as this reminds me of, or I agree or disagree with this because I find this interesting because. So it's a reaction, right? And the text to world connection similarly asks them to pick out a text, a, a piece, a passage from the text and connect it somehow to the world. This reminds me of an issue that is going on in California right now. Um, this reminds me of um, a, a person in the world right now, or this reminds me of um, my, my father or my mother, a character in the text. Or this theme from the text really connects well to something that's going on in my life or in my community. Again, this is a connection that asks students to link what they're learning to the real world and their lives. In so doing, it is something that motivates students to learn. Here's some tips. Because the point of the text to self and the text to world connections is motivating, 
and getting giving students a sense of belonging, I allow students to use English or to code switch when they're when they answer if they find that it's necessary to best express these ideas that they have. But I also tell them that they can go back to their text that they're reading and use vocabulary, phrases, etc., to structure, to scaffold their response. I collect these um, connections and I use students' replies to create activities which actually respond to their life experiences. I use, um, I use these um, replies to create class discussions, topics for writing assignments, to select future readings or videos to watch. And here's a little trick I use. As part of their answer, I ask students to copy the passage that they will react to. Why is that? Because in copying somebody else's words, they start to make a connection between, between what they're reading and what they will write. And they can pick up tips on how to spell words and how to write phrases. Notice that in doing so, I am using these two connections to expand the students' functional proficiency, to reach into the text and learn language. Moving now to the text to text and text to language connections, I will show you how they support retrieval practice. Remember, it's remembering and interleaving, which remember is mixing up old skills and knowledge with new ones. Let's start with a text to text connection. There are three of them here. Essentially, once again, it involves picking out a passage from the text. And I ask my students always to copy or write this passage as they're listening to it and connect it to a text, connected to a passage from another text that we've looked at in class. If it happens to be a short story, I might ask them to compare a particular character in this reading to one from a previous reading. I can also put the focus on language and ask them to pick out, again, to copy a phrase from their current text and connect it to a phrase that they found in a previous text. Again, this is retrieval because I am asking them now to go back and review what the text that they've read before and to make a connection, to create continuity between an old text and a new text. Here's uh, three text to language connections. The text to language connection um, engages students in looking at a text from the point of view of picking out valuable language either for use in their everyday lives or for language that is valuable for activities within the class. So with that in mind, I, I might ask students to copy phrases from the text that they will need for an upcoming presentation that they have. I might ask them to copy vocabulary that will be useful for a project they're working on. And in parentheses, you will see that I have put nouns, verbs, and adjectives. The reason for that is because I've noticed that when you ask them to copy vocabulary, students automatically and almost exclusively go to nouns. You need to remind them that in order to speak or write, whatever it is that they wanna do with language, they don't just need nouns, they need verbs, adjectives, phrases, etc. I might also ask them to go back to um, the text, text from the previous week and find structures in that text that they're also finding in this new text. Each of these text connections is very useful on their own, but it's when you put them together that they become very powerful. To show you that, I'm going to tell you about how I use all four connections in a course that I teach and it's called Spanish for the Professions. It's a heritage language course. And in this course, students prepare a professional portfolio. I start out with um, the text to self and the text to world connections because 
for me, the top priority at the beginning of a semester is motivating students, getting them engaged in what we're learning, as well as getting them to feel that they belong in this course. So the first week of the semester, we watch a video on the value of speaking Spanish uh, in almost any profession in the United States, right? Um, so that's part of motivating and engaging them. We also read um, a newspaper article on all the advantages that come to bilingual speakers, advantages in terms of um, making yourself more marketable, making more money, and um, being promoted to more engaging activities in any given company. Once I've got them motivated and engaged, I move to the text to language and text to self and text to text connections. Here I ask them to compare what they have heard in the video to the reading they have read. And I ask them to pick out language or compare the use of language in both texts, right? Throughout the semester, we're constantly doing readings which become um, increasingly specialized for students. So students who start out knowing that they wanna do something in the area of business, for example, they start out with very general readings in Spanish on business and they zero in, they start to pick out readings that really connect with their interests and the kind of portfolio that they want to build. So I keep using these different types of text connections to build what will become a portfolio that's differentiated to each student's needs. This portfolio, of course, will include valuable language. It will include information about students, their own personal motivations and goals, which they can apply to writing cover letters, to job interviews later on. And even if they're not looking for a job, for applications, let's say your students are in college, in high school and they're going to apply to college, they can use this information as they craft their application letter. This becomes a tool then, this portfolio becomes a differentiated tool that is a great resource, not only in the classroom, but beyond the classroom. Notice how it's another, another use then is differentiating instruction. We've seen how it expands functional proficiency, how it responds to learner's motivation, goals, and life experience, and the portfolio is the ultimate tool for differentiating instruction. So now I'm ready to summarize what we have seen about these four text-to-text -text connections and how they can be used to get learners to engage with text at a deeper level. They, we, they do this by supporting two functions, supporting the principles and practices of HL teaching, which are expand functional abilities, address students' goals and motivations, and differentiating instruction. And they also do this by aligning with the principles of retrieval practice, which is remembering, constantly rehashing what has been done, and interleaving, which is mixing it all up. Research shows that the kind of effort that students have to put into practicing structures when they're kind of mixed up with other structures gives big outcomes, good results in terms of learning. As always, we ask you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you like this video, to give us a thumbs up and share it with others who might also like it. And we, of course, need your comments and ideas to improve this series. Let us know other ways for using text connections, as well as share your ideas for other videos in the Small Teaching Big Learning Collection. Thank you.